Hey everybody, Joseph P. Farrell here with yet another video blog. I hope you're enjoying these. I'm kind of having fun doing them. It's a different format for me and it's uh, a change of pace. I'm doing it because as I've uh, suggested earlier, I've had some things come up rather suddenly that I have to tend to, so I'm trying to schedule as many of these blogs ahead of time as I can. Um, this blog is about something that was emailed to me by a friend of mine. And I'm going to link the link on the website version of this blog. It's called The White Supremacist and Fascist UFO Contactees. And uh, this little blog on a website called The Mists of Avalon, this little blog is a comment and I want to read some of this to you. I find it rather interesting. It corroborates some things I said in Saucer, Swastikas, and Psyops. It states, Below is some text that further demonstrates that much of the UFO contact team movement is indeed a front for neo-Nazism, fascism, anti-Semitism, and American nationalism. Whilst looking for some books on the subject a while back, I noticed that some of the authors below were being recommended on the Stormfront website. That is a British neo-Nazi organization. <clears throat> and the blog goes on to point out that much of the I Am UFO contactee movement, uh, Elizabeth Clare Prophet's Church, Universal and Triumphant, is yet another one of these very kind of right-wing, quasi-religious UFO contactee movements. And then, of course, they point out in this blog that George Hunt Williamson and William Dudley Pelley were two of the very early associates of George Adamski and that they themselves clearly, in, in Pelley's case, had clear associations to American proto-fascist movements uh, prior to the Second World War. And these were the people that Adamski hung around with. Now, I find this interesting because the blog points out, and my friend pointed out, and I wanted to comment on this because I thought that she made a very, very interesting observation. She pointed out that there's people out there in the current UFO community that believe that the different alleged extraterrestrial species, the greys, the Nordics, the reptilians, what have you, that there are groups advocating that and people, I can think of a couple researchers right off the top of my head, I'm not going to mention any names, that believe that the Nordic, you know, the human looking blonde haired, blue eyed people are the good guys and that the greys and so on are the bad guys. All right. Now, I'm not in the business, as you know. I'm not a ufologist. I, I try and tend to avoid the subject, and I certainly try to avoid the subject of contactees, abductees, greys, you know, anybody can get online and tell a story, and that's why I avoid all of that stuff. The problem for me here, folks, is it's a philosophical one. It's a moral one. It's an ethical one. It's a spiritual one. Because if you look at these early contactees, particularly George Adamski, as I attempted to do in Saucers, Swastikas, and Psyops, you find that if you look at it a particular way, you find that they are using the themes of religion. In other words, look at George Adamski's contactee case. What does he do? He goes out in the desert with some friends. He tells them to stay behind while he goes over a hill where the contact with the higher being allegedly happens. So no one sees it. No one really witnesses it. And Adamski comes back with a message from the higher being to mankind. Now, the parallels here with Moses on the mountain with and the Hebrews left down below, with Paul on the Damascus road, and with Mohammed on the mountain with the archangel. The parallels here are, to my mind, all too obvious. And this is what disturbs me now about not only the contactee but the abductee phenomenon. 
and the alleged messages that are being given because what is really being claimed for the purveyor of the message, whether or not these events actually really happened or not, is not in my mind important. What's important in my mind is the sociological construct that results from this. The construct is that a certain person is claiming a status to a privileged message, or if you will, a revelation, that one can only react to either in faith or belief or skepticism and doubt. Neither reaction really is a reaction that is based upon reason, if you stop and think about it. Both are reactions to a claim. Now in the case of Adamski and what my friend was trying to point out here, the message that was given was one of a very subtle, implicit fascism. Because anytime you elevate a message and a messenger, that means everybody else becomes, in a certain sense, subservient to the message. And in Adamski's case, or the Nordics, you have this very, very subtle form, not only of, of fascism in the message itself, but you have very obviously in the blonde-haired, blue-eyed prototype, the, the typical Nordic report of, of, of the Nordic alien, you have an inherent or incipient kind of racism, or if you prefer, racial profiling, that I find rather disturbing. And the more so because very often these are, as in Damsky's case with the humanoid aliens allegedly contacting him, accompanied by messages of human subservience to these higher powers. We're being asked so many times by these messengers to accord ET some sort of special privileged intellectual and moral status. They're higher intellectual beings, therefore they must have a higher morality. Ergo, we shouldn't be too upset if they whisk us out of our homes in the middle of the night, take us on their flying saucers, and perform all sorts of bizarre and brutal experiments on us because they have a higher morality. Well, that kind of activity, in a certain sense, was a kind of activity we saw not too long ago in the last century in certain countries in Europe. And the higher morality was used to justify that activity. This is where I part company with so much ufology, because in my mind, the activity and the morality are immoral. And I can only look at those people who think that these alleged encounters with ETs are that the ETs are good, if they are indeed real, I can only question these people's judgment. They, they, they seem to have lost their judgment. The bottom line, we're dealing here with something that is specifically fascist in its implications. It is specifically religious in its structure. And in both cases, we are asked, being asked to trust not only the message, but the messenger. But when the message is one of implicit subservience and suspension of our normal human mores and conscience and sense of the sacredness of life and the inviolability of that, then I do question all of this. I, I think ufology has to wake up and get away from these kinds of stories and get back to doing some hard and fast, not only scientific thinking, but some hard and fast philosophical thinking. In no case, bottom line for me, in no case have I encountered any story, and I know some very famous abductees and contactees, in no case have I encountered any story that convinces me that if these ETs are real, that they have anything other than the grossest immorality. And therefore, I can't judge any of their actions if indeed they happened 
as being anything other than evil toward humanity. So that's my bottom line, my thought for the day, folks. Uh, I hope you're enjoying these video blogs, and I will see you all on the flip side. Bye-bye.